you know the vibes we are back good rising good people welcome back to the hbcu sure. podcast. uh you know what i'm saying we took a brief hiatus but we returned and we have another good episode for you i'm bobby k one of your co-hosts or the other co-hosts of the show Hashim, you already know, Hashim the dream, you know, rolls <laughs> off the tongue. We got a guest right here. If you want Special to guest. Yourself. I thought usually the uh, hosts introduce the guest, but I'll introduce myself. I, Steven. you got the man of the hour. We got Steven Thorny. Woo! Yes. Give me a claps, claps. Thank I'm you, thank right. you. Poetry uh, snaps, hand claps. Mr. No. Graphic Designer, this is our homie, yeah. Steve Horny. Welcome to the show. Appreciate you having being a guest on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be the very first guest of the podcast. Um, you know, I, I, I know we had a little plan to do a podcast of our own in the past, but, you know. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Out. You didn't like Water the under the bridge, you know what I'm saying. You didn't like the theme music. You didn't like the names I was coming up with. So, you know, no, it's, it's terrible. Terrible. Friendships and podcast partners, you know, two different realms, you know, sometimes you don't cross those lines. So yes, I'm definitely. happy to be a guest. Yes. Yeah. And we appreciate you being on the show, even though, yes, you did uh, mess that whole idea. But it's cool, though. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're hey, here. We're present. I'm under the bus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right under. <laughs> but no, it's all right. Um, but yes, uh, we're back with another episode. This is going to be part two of the impact of social media episode. If you didn't catch the first one, it's on YouTube. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our page. But before we get started on the topic, we you already know, we got to do the HBCU Fun Facts. Hashim got this uh, episode's edition. Yes, I do. And uh, as everybody knows, it's February, Black History Month. So, mm-hmm. you know, shout out to all like innovators, um, creatives, you know, anybody that's working on their craft. But I'll get into the fact right now. Uh, the Morals Act were federal land grants that guaranteed funds for colleges. The first federal land grant in 1862 did not apply to HBCU colleges. So Alcorn University in Mississippi was the first one to get the actual land grant. So uh, shout out to Alcorn University in Mississippi. Yeah. Do your thing. Yeah. Pave the way. Um, but yeah, now we can get into our top. You want to start it off? Yeah. All right. So yeah, uh, thank anybody. you for the fun fact, uh, Hashim. So yeah. So like I said, we're doing part two of impact of social media. So, you know, we left off kind of talking, you know, vaguely about how social media has an impact on relationships and dating and things of that nature. But since we have a special guest on the show, before we get into that, we would like to, you know, maybe get his perspective on um, the impact of social media. So, Dorney, if you can just give us like some intel into on a macro level from your perspective, like how important or how impactful social media has been from like a societal perspective. Okay. Um loaded question uh, <laughs> um so i mean social media ever since maybe i guess 2005 it's just impacted pretty much every part of the globe mm-hmm. um it's impacted the way people communicate you know like how they communicate who they communicate with um and just overall you know, the amount of time that I guess people put into their image. This is something that I kind of wanted to get into where, you know, I, I, I've, I'm kind of separating the social media world and the real world and that in social media, people kind of cre- create their own brand. Their own self is kind of like a brand of themselves, of like the reality. And I don't think that's something people have ever really envisioned when like Facebook and Twitter and everything started popping off that it was going to get to a point where it is ingrained. And I feel like the younger people, it's more ingrained with their real world. And 
you know, social media world, but I kind of see it as us as we're, you know, older, I guess, older young adults. I don't even know what, we're adults, you know, 25, 26. We're, we're, we're old. We ain't old. We ain't old. We ain't old. Not at all. I was just talking about how I threw out my back earlier, but, you know, we ain't old. Um, <laughs> Thank you. You know, I just, I, I kind of see it from that macro perspective of the way I, I accept things that happen on social media. You could, you do have the power to tune it out. You do have the power to create your own brand, your own media company, if you will, because everyone has a voice. So everyone has an opinion on things. Um, I'm kind of bouncing around all over the place. I don't think I'm actually really making a big point, but I guess we could segue into the fact that I feel like you have to keep up a certain image. You have to post your best pics of yourself. You only post the good times, the good things that have happened in your life. And you never post obviously the bad things. Cause why would, you know, why would you want, why would you want anyone to know the bad things that happened in your life? So it's just a very, very warped sense of reality that people think it's reality when it's actually not. So I guess that's kind of something we could segue into. I feel like we could talk about it. I, I want to touch, that's I want to touch upon the, the, the fact that you said that we don't want to post like the bad stuff that's happening in our life. Cause like, who wants to see that? But people do still post the bad stuff and they post themselves crying and whenever I see those videos, I always think, why do you post that? Like, why take it? Why take the time to take out your phone and record yourself in your like darkest moment and then post it so other people can see you in your darkest moment and vulnerable? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I would never. I'm not built like that. I, I get what you're saying, Hajim. And like certain circumstances, I agree that, you know, like, Certain things, you know, don't necessarily need to be publicized just for your own, you know, protection of privacy and things of that nature. But, you know, like to speak to Donnie's point, I think that I, I feel like it's, it's very odd to make social media a thing where it's a platform where everyone just shows themselves as a perfectionist. You know, oh, I need to show my best picture with my best angle so that people can see that I'm I'm fit and that, you know, I'm attractive in the face or, you know, people need to only see birthday pictures, birthday videos, graduation pictures and videos. Like there's no sense of like vulnerability to humanize yourself. So when people go on social media, it becomes like this robotic space where people try to act as if real life and real emotions don't exist. And people take on that character into their real life and start not to care as much about certain things because but, uh -huh. they've been starting to play a persona based on how social media is like programmed to, for you to use it. Yeah, and I, it's just it just leads to constant comparison, you know, of yourself compared to others, whether you know, you want to admit it or not that you maybe even do it on a subconscious level that you do it. Mm -hmm. Like you always got to put on, you know, this, uh, face, you know, like, Oh, we're grinding every day, you know, Oh, so-and-so is getting the new promotion. Oh, that person lost weight. That's great. This is whatever. Like it does dive into your self-worth where it's like, Oh, wow. You know, like I'm in a difficult point in my life right now. Like no one else is struggling or whatever it's like man i you know i have issues and i think it, it leads down that path and again like i said that's why I, I always try to keep fact that it's separate from reality as ingrained as it is in you know um our politics and our communication and all that stuff it does have real life consequences and it does have real means and ways of communicating but it's two different worlds and you need to be able to separate that fact. And uh, I recently came back on Twitter, on Instagram after, and Facebook too, but after a little bit more than a month break, just to kind of see what it was like. I kind of felt like I was just wasting my Who time. Who inspired you to do that? What's that? Who inspired oh you to God. do that? <laughs> God. What did I, sorry, I can't. Who, who did, who inspired you to make that decision? Just curious. 
You're welcome. You, you don't have to thank me. It's all right. <laughs> anyway. I, I wanted to add some levity. I just wanted to add some, some levity. Go ahead. I get it. No, Bobby did. And maybe we could touch upon upon that too. Um, you know, what his experiences were like. I just wanted to see what it's like. I felt like it was a big waste of time. I, know, I didn't feel like I was really getting any value out of it besides very quick, like, you know, I see like a funny meme or, you know, someone says something phony, whatever. It's like, oh, ha. And then next thing it's like, it was never really, it's not fulfilling <laughs> yeah. at all. And I'll keep, keep it like a hundred too. Like, I don't care what most people are doing <laughs> in general. Like, I, I like, mo- like I see people, people. I haven't, you know, talked to him since high school or whatever. Like, like, I'm just going to keep it high. It's not like disrespectful to them or whatever to be like, they don't care what I'm doing. I don't care what you're doing. Like, it's just, mindless kind of crap I'm scrolling through so that month break like that's just what it kind of taught me and I thought I would have FOMO out of all of it like I felt like that was going to be the biggest thing about it and I don't know I just didn't and I just came back like honestly just for FOMO? me and what you said FOMO yeah fear of missing out like oh, just gotcha. fear of not you know missing out on information and stuff and we could touch upon that too that I think it's just information overload that's causing issues as well. But yeah. I felt like FOMO was going to be the biggest part of it. And it wasn't. And I just kind of came back just for like memes and just to kind of keep updated on like the NBA and stuff. Cause you know, it's something uh, I'm passionate about go nuggets. Um, so th- that's kind of what I got out of it. And, you know, I wonder what your opinions are about, you know, your breaks or just your experiences like that. I mean, okay. Okay. Uh, well, I, yeah, good. I I've taken breaks, but mostly in college. I I haven't taken a break since because you know I can control it and I'm not really obsessed with it. Uh, so in college, I usually take breaks during finals week. And people that know me, that went to the same school, like I would delete Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. Um, Zero dark thirty mode like LeBron. Basically, <laughs> basically. I'm just focused, and there's times where I'm, I'm I'm finished, I'm doing my work, and it's like an hour of me doing work, and I take up my phone. I'm like, all right, now I get to oh, damn, I ain't got nothing to look at. Like, I feel that's the part of like fear of missing out, or I it just got nothing to do because I'm so comfortable in just resorting to all right, I got a quick Instagram, see what what is other people doing, Twitter, see what other people's thinking about. Snapchat, same thing as Instagram, because they bite in. No, Instagram bite it off of Snapchat. Um, and it's it's just like a short fix. I think you said that. It's like a short fix. And after that, it's like, like all right, I don't care about that anymore. That's gone from my mind. Yeah. Um, my experience, I I hated it. I hated the not, – I'm not even fair of missing out, but just not having something to take up my time when I'm bored. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah, that, I think that's the biggest thing that I've gotten from it. Uh, so far that I've learned to like manage how much time I spend on social media and where I distribute my energy really. So Bobby, you could tell me, tell us about your experience through that. Yeah. For me, I made a decision last year, like I believe in February to like take like a week social media break just because I was curious on you know I've I've heard of it before but I was just like is that really a thing or is this like what is the purpose of it what's the reasoning um but I just decided to try it myself because you get into habits We're, we're creatures of habit so you get into the habit of going on social media frequent especially as young as we are you know being in your 20s and seeing a bunch of trendy things trending topics seeing real life disasters going on, uh, seeing all types of slander towards public figures and towards, you know, people in general, men talking shit about women, women talking shit about men. And it can be a fun tool. It can, it's a tool of information. And that's another big reason a lot of us use it uh, subconsciously, but it can also be a cesspool of toxicity, unfortunately, as well. And I wanted to see what it was like to not be on it for a week and take it out of my ritual and out of my comfort zone of not, oh, I have to go on the 
to the bird app. I have to go on to the pictures and video app, you know what I mean? And just kind of settling into my own space in a sense. And, you know, I'm not going to act like it was just the easiest thing in the world at first, but you kind of get used to, you know, not having to be on social media and uh, try to interact with people that you don't even know that well and post stuff that maybe may or may not be interesting to other people to, for likes or retweets or whatever, you know what I mean? Cause you, you get into that cycle of it. So for me, I feel like it's, it's always healthy to, for especially people our age to like unplug from social media and be in our own realm of reality. Cause like Dwayne said, there's a big difference between real life and social media. And that those lines kind of get distorted, especially at this point in where we are in society. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah. it's like, you don't want to re completely remove yourself because there's things that you find out after the fact that happened that you were curious about that or that have real life consequences involved. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, Texas with the storms and stuff. I wouldn't know anything about that if it wasn't for social media. So it is an outlet to a certain degree. But I kind of want, if we can, to like kind of reverse back. Um, can I ask one question before we do? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so do you guys have your like Instagram or Twitter on private or um, no. public? To Twitter, I have public. Um, just no, so no, what? Yeah. What? Am I gone? Yeah, good. No, uh, keep going. Twitter, yeah. Twitter, I have public. Uh, just so I mean, I don't even really communicate with like other people that like I don't follow, like, like that don't follow me or I don't really personally know. I don't tweet out that um, that much, but you know, you always have that hope that you know if you say something, whatever, and you maybe could get into conversation with someone and whatever, or your tweet blows up or whatever. You know, Sarah, I'd rather public. Uh, Instagram, though, I have private. I mean. I don't even really have anything to hide. I actually deleted like a lot of my pictures off of Instagram. That was like, since like, you know, high school when I got it. Um, Same. That's again, it's kind of like, oh, it's that, yeah. that brand. Like what, are, what do people even go on Instagram for nowadays? Like a lot of times, like, oh, say I meet, uh, you know, I meet a girl, whatever, you know, we exchange, whatever. And then she goes on there and then like, oh, she could see like if, uh, an embarrassing picture that I took in like high school or whatever. And it's yeah. like, like I just I gotta get rid of it. Like I gotta look my no, best. But, but she would. She that's, might appreciate the glow up. Yeah, but that's your true. Like now I was about to say your true form, but that's like it shows <laughs> where how I think. I keep I keep some like my younger pictures just so so it shows like where you come from and how you have grown as like a uh, I was about to say character as a person. Yeah. Granted, you know, there's some ass pictures that be on profile that are not there anymore oh <laughs> uh, but i only ask that because you, you guys like we have the power to control what we see or who sees what mm -hmm. on our social media mm -hmm. so it's it's really our fault if we get like well at a certain extent that's our fault that we're seeing what we're seeing you know what i'm saying like i know Pretty twitter is, is different because you see other people could retweet something that you don't follow that person, but one of your followers follows, follows that person, you know? So well, anything can like pop it. on your timeline. But Instagram is like, yeah, even likes pop up now. But Instagram is like, all right, if you follow this person, you're going to see them on your timeline. If you don't, they're not going to be there, you know? Yeah, but then... That's, that's, that's my only thought. You can go back to... No, I mean, I can bounce off that. Um, like we said, it's like to a degree you get it with. Like the, the thing is we get a lot of our information off of social media and that's like what we value a lot of it on. And then it's a good and bad thing with all this information at the same time coming at us where, you know, I just want to follow maybe some news outlets just to see what generally is going on or whatever. Um, but then that turns into, you know, you go to the comment section and then, it just turns into just, you know, heated battles after heated battles after, after false information, after this, after that, whatever. And like, 
I like knowing what's going on. I like information, but at the same time, I don't mind the mindset of like ignorance is bliss in terms of like, you know, like a lot of, not that I'm saying I want to turn my eye to the bad things that are happening in the world, but I don't need to know everything and nobody knows everything about everything that's going on at the same time. Like it kind of just distorts your you know view on humanity I feel like sometimes and so sometimes like that like that disconnect that I had for like a month felt really good in that sense where like I could focus on myself I don't even really care what's going on or whatever is nothing to put me in some sort of mood by reading something that I didn't want to see so that's good but since I use it as a source of gathering information I'm missing out on some of the things that I do value and would like to know what's going on so it, it, it's tough like there's a lot of clutter and there's a lot of crap that you have to dig through to get this the value that you want out of it i think we have to also acknowledge to to piggyback off of what you just said dorney that no one taught us how to use social media like when social media became popular I would say more or less in the late 2000s and the early 2010s, we were like the main like users, you know what I'm saying? Like teenagers, people in their, in middle school, high school. Dumb. Hmm? What happened to watching? That's a test dummy. Right. That's a test yeah, dummy. We were, right. We were, we were the test dummies. So no one taught us how to use social media, how to, yeah, but nobody knows how to use it. Like, no, there's no writer. Like, nobody knows. Still, no. What I'm saying, I, I know that, but um, what I'm saying is, there, we've been using it since we were young, and as time has progressed, social media has gotten bigger and bigger as we've gotten older. So we are like the main people who have seen the boom in social media and seen the changes in life within and outside of social media. So the information overload and overload and things of that nature, like it's, it's overwhelming, but like, you know, we don't have to be so harsh on ourselves about like, like Hashim said, preventing things that we don't want to see because it's a process in trying to handle like, okay, is social media, should it be for brand? Should it be to just post like little pictures or thoughts? Um, should it be like, like what? What is your uses of it? Usage of it? You know what I'm saying? You still it's a process to figure that out. So, Hashim, like you asked, um, do you guys have social media on private and public? I have both of my Instagram and Twitter on public. I previously had both on private years ago when I was younger. You know because you know you, you're going for jobs, careers, you know things of that nature, yeah. and people might search for that type of stuff and if you say certain things out of the mindset of just like oh i'm talking to people i know or talking to my peers and don't realize that businesses or people in the corporate space is watching or paying attention to that stuff you can like fuck up an opportunity but as i've gotten older now i don't really give a damn about that because i have to be honest about myself and i have to be responsible of what i project onto my social media and how it reflects my identity you know what i'm saying so i think having that wherewithal for all of us to understand that social media is like a it is a part of our identity but it's not our complete identity so not showing your vulnerability and things of that nature is just kind of is being dishonest to yourself about a part of who you are in a sense I agree. Um, I also want to ask, like, there's, I know we talked a lot about, like, the negativities of social media, but there's also, I think, it's positive. And, like, recently there's been, I don't know if you guys are interested in, like, stocks. I wasn't for the stock market. Mm. But, like, I wasn't until, you know, you, you heard about the GameStop thing. Yes. GameStop to the moon, you know. <laughs> that, that's astronauts out there uh, to the moon, baby. Right, um, but <laughs> yeah, there's you think, yeah. 
<laughs> so like there's different opportunities so that could be a lot of people were talking about that and giving on their take on the stock market or how the public could take back power from the big i don't know bigger people hedge funds and stuff like that right so i think that's a positive you can learn different stuff from that you wouldn't learn if you weren't on there so there mm-hmm. are some positives in that aspect I think there's a lot more negative, but there's, you know, you do have to look at the bright side sometimes. Of course. I mean, it's a double-edged sword. I mean, to act like social media is all negative would be, like, disingenuous. Like, of course it's positive stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's entertainment. It's a form of entertainment. You know, um, it's it's a tool to meet and network with different types of people. It's a news source. It's an outlet. You know what I'm saying? It's a way where you can brand yourself and show your creative space, creative size. Uh, like, Donnie, you do graphic design, I do poetry, people who do music. You're able to grow within your brand and have more people have eyes on you through social media. And if that wasn't, if it wasn't as big as it was, as it is, then would people get the opportunities presented to them and within their cre- uh, careers and creative spaces? So it's a it's a double edged sword, absolutely. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, social media. It's you know how many self made millionaires like every day are probably made through, you know, being an influencer, you know, or right. anything regarding right. it. Like people make side money just you know because they're famous and they also have an Instagram post and they do like the entrepreneurship is almost limitless. Um, because of these channels now so it definitely Mm -hmm. gives power to the people in that sense where people more and more are becoming their own bosses and doing what they really want to do and finding a way to make money off of their passions so I think that's been probably the biggest positive in that sense that as people argue that you know we're losing kind of our minds we're losing our freedoms that people at least have that in a way that they could you know, make a living doing what they love to do. And I was gonna pose the question too of the argument that these social media companies are, um, they're technically private, you know, owned, privately owned companies. So the, the fact that they could, you know, censor people or create new rules or do this, whatever, do you think that's, you know, justifiable that they're, um, you know, they are privately owned companies or do you think they've gotten so big that, you know, the laws just haven't caught up to them yet or there needs to be something done and social media is such a big thing now that not one company should be able to control control it, I guess. What, what's your guys' thoughts on that? You go first. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, I have an idea of what I want to say, but I'm going to let you that's- go first. I like, I have to think about it. I need okay. to digest it. Okay. Uh, well, I'll say this. I mean, that is a loaded question, but I'll say this, though. Um, and I feel like, I, I, don't, I think in a lot of sectors, there is a growing surplus of, like, monopolies. Um, and I don't think that's a good thing because competitive balance makes sure that certain companies or corporations don't get too enlarged financially, in, uh, influence-wise, things of that nature. And having these big corporations have such autonomy over something that millions of people use and- Billions. Facebook billions has- of people, yeah. People use to spread information, to spread viral videos and messages and things of that nature is, is a very dangerous thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, censorship has always been a topic of discussion because it's like, on one hand, you want to allow people to have a sense of free speech, especially on social media, because it is platforms. That's the platform it is supposed to allow is is the ability to have free expression and to say your opinion on things and what you value. But if it's within the realms of hate speech and and it's dangerous rhetoric that's being spread, is it supposed to be become then a controlled environment? So 
for me, you know, censorship is is just not really something you can do, even with evil things, even with racist rhetoric, even with sexist rhetoric, even with anti-Semitic rhetoric. It's hard to have censorship because then you're you're trivializing the whole form and idea of freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Because I could say how much I love black people in our communities and a racist white person could see that as, oh, I'm a black supremacist or something and take that completely out of context. So then I would be censored for showing my pride in who I am in my community. You know what I'm saying? So, cause people's perspectives are different. So, I mean, that's the best answer I could give. That's, you know, that's a great question. I don't know if Hashim wants to add something to that, but. Uh, I'll add like when these like corporations, but like, yeah, like corporations say that get so big and they have no other competition nobody's gonna stop them they could do whatever they want and mm -hmm. that's that's they just got so much freedoms that the public is just they got nothing they they can't fight back so if you do something wrong and they'll they say all right you're you're banned permanently and that's the only thing of that type of platform it's like i can't do anything about it yeah i can't fight it they just gonna be like yeah good luck try to find something else but there's nothing else really. And these platforms are so important, so I, as, as we've you know said, they're so important for communication, for making money, for getting information, for you know a lot of different things for a lot of different people. And I like these companies have blown up so fast, have gotten so powerful so fast. I just feel like like laws have not caught up to that. So we're in a situation now where they have a lot of power. And yet they're still privately owned companies and they're saying that they have the power to censor people and, you know, delete their whatever, or like, you know, they, they just have a lot of influence over, over it that a lot of people use for communication. But at the same time, they could argue that they're not liable for anything that is said or what happens on their platform at the same time. So people are always calling out these double standards of, you know, oh, so-and-so said this, and didn't get banned but so and so said this and got banned and so said but like so it's either you you can't like have your cake and not and you know like not eat it too like it, you can't you can't have both so you're either a privately owned company that is liable for the things that happen on your platform or you're something that you know maybe uh laws get involved or whatever that like you can't necessarily silence people or whatever because it's against one of our, you know, core, you know, policies of, of freedom of speech that, you know, when it's seen that when, when you censor people, it, it generally doesn't go well, even, you know, pre social media and everything. So yeah. I don't know, I just feel like the laws have not caught up with it yet. No one's ever saw these companies getting as big and powerful as they are. And yeah, I don't know. That was my thought on that. I, f I feel like when they censor somebody, they get more support by the public, like by the other, like the little people, right? Because mm -hmm. like, all right, they're censoring. They gotta be saying something and I'm gonna listen to it, right? So then it, it could either be in a bad way, like they're um, supporting bad stuff or it could be in a good way, but they're gonna get more supporters if you censor them. So mm -hmm. they, it's, I, I don't know if it's like a lose-lose situation for them, but I don't know what they could do to you know, help I'll just out. I'll just Real say to, I'll just I'll just say just to quickly add to this um just as a message to people who see this freedom of expression and speech does not mean freedom of consequence so you have the ability on social to use social media as a tool to spread whatever message or you know thing or ideology that you want to say but you also, especially if you're a grown ass adult, you also need to understand that people, there are people out here who have real life consequences to things that you say in the systems in place that, that harbor the things that you're spreading. So if you say something that's wild offensive, wild disrespectful, 
you have the freedom to do that, but just understand that, you know, you could get banned, you could get fired from your job, and depending on how bad it is, you can face legal trouble. You know what I'm saying? So just be understanding and prepared for that when you're using your Facebook, when you're using your Twitter, that you don't get freedom of responsibility. You know what I'm saying? So, but just to yeah. move the conversation forward a little bit, um, Hashim, there was a question before we get to our closing segment that we'll add into the show. There was a question yeah. or a topic you wanted to kind of dwell into a little bit. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think I have enough time for that. So, oh, really? uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go right into the HBCU oh. question. It's like three minutes left right now. Damn. Okay, it's all right. All right, so we are adding a new segment to the show. It's called HBCU Confessions. Uh, some of you might be familiar with this uh, page. But uh, basically, we're going to be reading off some anonymous confessions and just either answering a question, if it's a question, or just saying what we would do in that scenario. And it's kind of like rapid fire, just to wrap up the show. So the confessions I'm going to read off today is... Uh, someone honestly put, what did they say? They said, um, how, do, how do you guys be in multiple relationships or have multiple people interested in y'all? I'm having a hard time finding one. So, <laughs> uh, Hashim, you could go first. Um, what, what is your perspective on that question or statement? Hey, I think, I think it is way too much energy. I think it's way too much energy to entertain a lot of people at one time. <laughs> and that, that you separating yeah. yourself, like giving yourself to other people, is you, you can't focus on finding one person by doing that. That's my opinion. Um, but that's our generation right now. Uh, Dorney, you Every, think? Everybody's leaving, living their best life. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. That, that'd be super life. emotionally draining for me. Um, never really juggled multiple people like that at the same time, but to answer Mr. Anonymous's question, like you can't even get one, um, just, just focus on yourself. Focus on yourself and improve on yourself and those multiple interests will come to you. So just focus on yourself. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it was a he or a she that put that on the thing, but uh, yeah. It's, 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 it's great to have options, especially around that age when you're single and, you know, you're trying to live your best life. But, yeah, multiple relationships is something that I definitely do not recommend uh, because you're going to get your ass caught up. And in terms of... Yeah, <laughs> and in terms from of... experience. Huh? Sounds like you're speaking from experience. Absolutely not. I'm saying I would never do that because I that just sounds like a headache and a half. Uh, multiple people interested in you, I mean... You have to put yourself in spaces. Obviously, it's hard to do that now in a pandemic. But once things start to open up a little bit more, you know, putting yourself in social functions and places where you can meet new people that have no idea who you are and can just have a fresh mindset of getting to know you better, you know, you give yourself more opportunities to, you know, find that one because we're all just trying to find love at the end of the day. So, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna wrap it up. Um, first, I'm gonna thank Dorney pulling up. Appreciate it. First special guest. Thanks for having me. I'm Shout yeah. out. Plus, um, 